We're going to continue analytics for business and economics. Lecture number seven, packages and comments. So let's talk a little bit more about it. All right. Hi, everybody. We are back in packages and comments. We're going to have typical view. We've got our notes, our lecture notes over here on the left hand side of the screen. We've got our studio. All right. We're using I'm using posit cloud right now. So the the cloud implementation of our studio over here on the right. And we're going to get started a little bit. And the first thing we're going to talk a little bit about is using comments. So what I want to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open up a new file. So I'm going to go ahead and I actually prefer to just work in an R Markdown file because it's a little bit easier for me. I just I, I can chunk up my stuff. I can add comments. I think it's really good. And the first thing we're going to do is we find it says, do you want to install these packages? So that's actually number two, loading and installing packages. But since we've got the teachable moment, let's do it right here. It's asking because I wanted to start an R Markdown. It needs all of these things to make that file work and that file format work. And what's a package? Well, it's an add-on to R. It's a bunch of other things and tools that, well, it extends the functionality of the R programming language. So what we're going to do is we're going to say yes. And then all of a sudden we're going to see all kinds of weird stuff happening here in the console. That's perfectly fine. It's going to take forever. Okay, well, it took me 30 seconds to get there. Hopefully it took you just a little less because I speeded up the tape post-production. And we're left with this. Now, this goes back to... Um, previous lecture when we talked a little bit about our markdown um, this basic setup I'm just gonna leave this as an HTML document I'm gonna call this um, notes for module one part two and the author is gonna be Logan Kelly and I'm gonna be fancy and I'm gonna have it use whatever the current date is and we'll go ahead and we'll click OK. Now I have this R Markdown file. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the console for right now. I'm going to maximize it in just a minute. But for right now, I'm going to minimize it. And I'm going to get, you know what? I'm going to leave some of this, this junk that it puts in here um, for right now. I'm going to leave that for right now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to save my file. And we'll put it notes. Just call it notes. Save that. There we go. We have a little notes file. Notes for module one, part two. Hooray. There won't be anything special in here. It's just going to be what's already available in the lecture notes. So there we are. In fact, it won't be as good as what's in the lecture notes. But here we go. And remember, this part's called the YAML or the essentially it's the preamble. It sets up a bunch of stuff for the most part, at least for this class. You don't need to mess with this. But the only thing you might have to mess with is this part right here where your name goes in there. You may want to replace your name here with your name uh, and so on and so forth. So let's keep going. And then we have the setup function. That's funny. That's fun. And then we have all of this other stuff. And so I want to talk a little bit before I delete all this other junk because we don't need it. Um, this right here. Remember in our markdown, I told you that those pound signs set off headings. Well, when you're outside of a code chunk and you see this, this is a code chunk. Remember, we talked about it. In fact, it's a code chunk and it has a name. It's called cars. I don't actually need that. You could get rid of that. Now it's just an unnamed comb chunk, but it has three back ticks and then R inside curly brackets to tell it it's R code. And then it ends with three brackets. Inside here is R code. This is designed for the computer to read and understand. Everything outside of this is designed for a human being to read and understand. So notice inside here, I've got computer commands. Outside, I've got, well, text. Oops, I made it small. There we go. I have text. You know, there's sentences. You can read that. It's English, right? So easy peasy. And that's the whole beauty of having an R Markdown file, is you can interpose English and um, your, your commands and whatnot. But notice you have these two hashtags or pound signs. Those signify a level two heading. If there was one, it'd be a level one heading. If there were three, three guesses what that'll be, a level 
three heading, yes. How many times can I use the word three in the same sentence? You get it. All right, so that's outside of the code chunk. Inside of the code chunk, though, is what's called a comment. All right, notice how it turned the line green. And what that basically means is R is going to ignore this line. So if I run this chunk like this, nothing happens. All right, nothing happens because I've commented out the line. However, if I get rid of the comment and I run it, looky there, something happened. All right, it did a summary of the cars data frame, which is a built-in data frame. And I know I'm being a little weird here because I didn't actually tell you about it or put it in or any of that stuff. So just don't do that ever again. Don't do what I did. That's bad. You want to load your data and we'll talk about that more later. But in any event, so what I want to do is I'm going to leave this system chunk. All right, or the setup chunk. I'm just going to delete everything else because we don't need that for our stuff. All right, just delete all of this. Oh, why'd you do that, computer? Bad computer. Okay, we'll delete all this and we'll start over. So now we know what a comment is. And you can see that's right up here, the same thing. When I put a pound sign inside of an R code chunk, that's going to be a comment. Now I know it's a little confusing because outside of it, it means one thing. Inside the code chunk, it means something else. I know, that's life. All right, so the next thing I want to do is we want to talk about installing packages. And there's this wonderful function called install.packages. It's exactly designed to install packages. So there's a big, big repository of packages. And these are just add-ons to R. You know, they just, they just add extra functionality. Um, but there's this big, big repository of them called CRAN. C-R-A-N. And I should know what CRAN stands for. I don't. And I don't care to. So it's CRAN. Okay. And when you use install.packages, it just goes out to that big repository and looks for a package downloads it and puts it in the right spot in your computer. Okay, so we're going to do a package in a couple of different ways in order to install those packages. The first thing is we're just going to use install.packages to install, let's install ggplot. All right, and so I'm going to come right down here to the console. I'm going to make it big for a minute. And one of the reasons why I might want to do this in the console is I don't want to install it every single time I run my um, code. I'll show you how to get around that in a minute. But let's do install packages. All right, and notice I've still got code completion, so it brings it up. All right, install packages, and then I'm going to put in quotation marks ggplot2. ggplot2 is a really, really fancy. Um, and common and popular package for making things like graphs and other data displays. And then I'm just going to hit enter. Boom. And now you see it's running a whole bunch of stuff. Ba 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 ba. All right. And as soon as it gets done doing a whole bunch of stuff, boom, we're done. All right. Great. All right. So that's, that's, we just installed the package ggplot. Now, if I tried to use something out of ggplot, it still wouldn't find it. So I need to load ggplot into memory. And to do that, I use the library command. All right, libraries for ggplot. I can never spell library, so rather than try, I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to put it right down in here. Now, oftentimes, what I will do is I won't do that in the console. I'll actually put the library command up here in my um, setup function. All right, it's my setup chunk. And I'll just put all the packages that I'm going to use in this document right there. And if I run this, the coach, oh, oh man, just don't run it. I, I hit it twice. Okay, bingo. So there we go. Now we have it. So it's been loaded into memory. But this is kind of a pain. All right, what if I don't know if it's been installed or not? Well, there's actually a really nice package called Pac-Man. I don't know where the name came from. I, I, I don't know, but I like to think it's like the video game. So Pac-Man, and what this Pac-Man package does is it has a function in there called pload. 
And what pload does is it says, okay, I want to load the package ggplot. I want to put that, I want to run this library command. But if I run library and ggplot isn't installed, so let me do that on a package that hasn't been installed yet. Let's try library and we'll do dplyr. Okay. I don't think I've installed dplyr yet. And I'm going to put it in quotation marks just in case. Okay. We'll run. No, 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 no. I've got it here, so I'm going to have to click on the little run button. All right, error, library, dplyr. There is no package called dplyr. Au contraire, I do say there is a package called dplyr. It says here you need to install it, but it just hasn't been installed yet. So what's a way that I could check for it to be installed and then actually install it if it hasn't been? So I'm going to use this pload function. All right, and that's in a package called pacman. But the problem is going to be here is we haven't installed Pac-Man. So the first thing we need to do is something like this. All right. This is a pretty advanced uh, little line of code. We haven't covered everything. You need to understand it. So I'm just going to go through it quickly. It's going to say if, and then it's going to ask, has Pac-Man been installed? All right. If it has not been installed, then it installs it. So you can include this little command right in the front of your in your setup function, and that will always take care of installing the Pac-Man function. Bing. All right, the Pac-Man function has been installed. Now what we need to do is we're going to use the Pac-Man function colon colon, and we use two colons after there to say I want to look inside a package for a function. We're going to p load. And now in this case we're going to put in, let's put in dplyr. And we're going to put it in, in quotation marks. It doesn't matter what dplyr does. We'll, we'll talk about it later. And we're going to run this. Now this time it doesn't install Pac-Man, but it does install dplyr. Okay. So I think it did. Alright, there we go. And then we can look at um, we can see his dplyr in there by typing dplyr, and you can see right down there now it can find dplyr. Right, and we have all kinds of cool functions. Dplyr is used for manipulating and cleaning data sets. Okay, and so let's do this one more time with the most commonly used package maybe of all time um, and it's going to be called the tidyverse so in, print, in quotation marks t-i-d-y-v-e-r-s-e -E. tidyverse now what is the tidyverse the tidyverse is actually a group of packages it includes ggplot2 it includes um, dplyr as well as a few other things um, that are all used for doing um, really nice data manipulation and working with data and data analysis. It's just a handy all around set of tools to have at your disposal. So we're going to run this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make the console just a little bigger. Then I'm going to clear that out and I'm going to run this. Uh, and we can see, boom, it's doing all the stuff it needs to do to install and load the tidyverse. And there's, there's a ton of packages here, so it's going to take a minute, so I'm going to speed this up. Okay, hopefully that didn't take too long because I speeded it up, but let's keep going. So those are packages. So the next thing we really need to be thinking about in terms of working with R is, is managing our workspace. So we know how to do comments. All right, so I can do a comment here. Um, load the tidyverse. Okay. And then I can load my package. All right, tidyverse actually is a, a whole group of packages, but hey, you know, it, it actually technically is a package as well. All right. And then finally, what we're going to do is let's look at 
working at, on managing all of our workspace. One of the things we might want to do is let's load a data set real quick. So I'm going to go data, all right, MT cars. All right, and now I have the MT cars data set in here. And so what I want to do now is I want to be able to save my workspace. So save the whole workspace. Let's also do, uh, you know, we'll do five. Um, let's see, let's say A, we'll store the value five inside of A. And then, oh, we can do something really wacky like B can be a function. of x and what we're going to do is we're going to return x to the third power all right and that's cool so we'll run this uh oh it didn't like my function what did i do wrong uh, da -da 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 -da. oh this is what i did wrong you can even see where i have unexpected token that means I forgot to do this there we go I was in the wrong language for a few minutes a few seconds there bingo oh, don't run. all right there we go I've got my function I've got empty cars I've got a this is all good now let's say I want to save all of this so I'm gonna go save dot image all right I can do that with code um, correction and I'm gonna do we're just gonna call it just like this my workspace all right and it's typical to call this something like our data you don't have to you can call it anything you want to but this is a typical file naming convention okay and we're just gonna run this thing now I have an our data file right down here called my workspace and so what I want to do now is let's say I decided to clear my workspace. There we go. Now I've cleared everything out. Now there's nothing in there. So if I come down here and I say I want to do B of 3 run error. Could not find the B function. But I just defined it up here. Let's say I want A. I just run A real quick. Oh, there is no A found. Why? Because I cleared out the global environment. Oh, but I saved it. So let's go ahead and we'll come right down here. I'm going to make a new chunk real quick. I don't know why I need a new chunk, but what the heck. And we're going to go load. Okay. Open parentheses. And I just want the same data file. Load this. And there you go. I got MB cars. That's my data frame. I've got A is equal to five and B is a function. So if I go ahead and come down here and say, all right, oh, no, not there. Down here to my um, console, way down at the bottom of the screen. All right, I put in A and I get five. I put in B of three and I get 27 because three to the third power is indeed 27. So there you go. I can save that stuff. I don't use this a whole lot, but um, you know, it can be handy. Okay. And so the next thing we can do is we can go ahead and list all the objects that are in there, or we could remove different objects. It's oftentimes a good plan to keep at, keep, you know, kind of clean up after yourself. And so if I don't need, say I'm now done with, um, let's see here, if I'm done with my function B or A, say I'm done with A, I want to get rid of it, I can do RM A. Run that. Now A is gone. 